Excellent. All right. So now is uh, the time of the evening where I get to uh, kick back, enjoy and learn and uh, really improve uh, some of my business prices because I'm going to bring on uh, Adam uh, Bood uh, as of now. And he's from the Authentic Sales Training Academy. So uh, just a bit about uh, Adam. He's a published author. He is a sales expert, uh, expert uh, and he's a course creator. And what he does is he helps entrepreneurs and small business owners uh, and salespeople to increase their sales conversion rates. And um, he can do it up to 400% authentically uh, and really improve their uh, bottom line without needing to go out and pay money to go and get a ton more sort of lead. So uh, most people's position is that they think that, uh, you know, to in increase their uh, sales in their business, they're going to pay for uh, Facebook ads or uh, Google ads uh, to get increased business. Adam's going to show you how you don't need to do that. And uh, you'll get a uh, really good sizable increase in business just by following some of what he's going to talk about tonight. So he's, he's been uh, a commission in commission based sales uh for about 30 years uh anyone that's in business anyway is in commission-based sales because uh, if you don't make sales then you don't eat <laughs> um so um uh, and he's been a sales manager sales training uh his own businesses as well in, in multiple industry sectors and markets and uh, one of the things i find really interesting about adam too is that he's been a business broker and that's given him a real insight into people's businesses and where they need to fix them up before they sell them so uh, he's got lots of insights there so let's uh, give a warm uh, round of applause and uh, welcome adam in thank you everybody thank you for that amazing intro nick um, first, I just want to uh, extend my gratitude for all of you for being here tonight. I know how uh, busy we all are in life and um, there's so many competing priorities. So the fact that we're all here tonight um, and you're here listening to me, it, uh, it's, it, it brings me a lot of joy. Um, what I'm about to share with you is essentially my life's work that I've turned on its head. And as Nick was saying right at the beginning, um, what you're going to get from me now is not your typical sales training type of um, um, webinar, it's going to be the complete opposite. And it's designed specifically for us to, I suppose, act in a different way when it comes to business and, um, and so forth. So uh, buckle in, you'll either love this or you'll hate this. I don't know if there's going to be anything in between. Um, some of you might be confused, but I'm happy to, uh, to debrief on that later. Um, I'm going to share my screen. I hope I get this right. I think it's that one, Nick. Let's see if I got this right. What can you see? Perfect. I can see that exact screen that we saw before. So you're on the right track. Yeah, they've obviously changed something. So uh, that's excellent. Um, all right. So let's start. And I've lost my mouse. I have to do this with my hands now. How bad's that? Yep. Uh, slideshow from the beginning. So essentially the webinar that, uh, that I've put together is how do we increase our sales by up to 400% without spending any more money on leads? And, and the reason for this is that I've been one of these uh, online marketers as well that spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on lead generation. And ultimately for what? I'm just sifting and sifting and sifting and sifting. And I just, it was just, um, it just didn't go anywhere. So uh, big high five, there's a, did that work for you? It hasn't changed, has it, Nick? It has not, no. Um, maybe I'm sharing the wrong screen. I'm obviously very new at this too. Uh, these uh, Zoom sort of tech things, they change it as well, just to uh, trip you up and see if you're awake. Yeah, have you got still that front slide? I still, I uh, know it just moved on now, so you're all good. So I got your welcome slide now. Yeah, okay. So I just need to change my display settings. It's not allowing me. What can you see now? 29 years of sales and business experience. And only that one? Sorry guys, I thought we had this all nutted out before, but Zoom has actually changed everything on me and this is all new and I've lost my function on my mouse. All right, 29 years of sales experience. Um, 
I've done face to face, I've done telephone, I've done online, I've sold on stage, I've sold tangible, intangible. Um, just let me know if you can't see this, by the way, Nick. Um, dealing at the CEO levels of tier one, tier two, tier three corporates, right down to mum and dads uh, and entrepreneurs, etc. The turning point for me is I have worked in multiple industries and it wasn't until I had my first six figure month that I realized that everything needed to change. And that was because my whole focus had all been about what can I get? How much money can I get from the work that I'm doing instead of the service that I'm doing? So when the GF, uh, GFC, when the uh, pandemic hit, that's when I really brain dumped everything into my book and created um, The Art of Authentic Selling. And it's very much a, a why to book. Everything that I teach people now is about why we need to be showing up in a very different way so that we can create a different outcome in the world. And that's where the Sales Training Academy is coming to play. Um, why do I do it? As I've said, I really want to change the way sales and business is done. And I really want to help expand growth mindset business owners and salespeople to create bigger business and a better career for themselves. The more that they can do that, the more opportunities and possibilities not only am I giving in the lives that I'm serving, but also what they're able to provide by the products and services that people sell. So who's my webinar for? It's for anyone that's really in sales, as Nick says, whether you're in startup, uh, whether you're um, an entrepreneur, solopreneur, whether you have a 500K to 5 million business, it really doesn't matter. It's for people that want to do things differently and, and are looking for some change. So um, what's really important uh, for everybody to, to know is, and I want you to write this down because I'm hoping that throughout the webinar, you will get what you came here for. What are the top things that you want to achieve? Top three things that you have uh, that are in the back of your mind when it comes to sales and your business. On that though, what's really important is when I was working as a business broker, this is what I learned about why most people um, choose their line of work. They've either fallen into it, meaning that um, they might have been a plumber working as a plumber for somebody else and decided, I just want to be working for myself. I don't want to work for that guy anymore. So I'm just going to start up something of my own. It was never a planned, precise act. It was a, what are we going to do next? Other than that, it could be something that they're incredibly passionate about. Um, but passion can often be the amount of people that I'll see that will turn a hobby into a business. And you can be really passionate about that but that doesn't necessarily mean that you've got a business mind and that doesn't necessarily mean you've got what it takes to turn a hobby into a passion that's going to create you uh, the income that you're after. Otherwise, you've got people like me that only get into it because, uh, or people that were like me, that got into it because of the money. Um, but what I learned through my experience is what business owners really want when it comes to um, going into business for themselves is they want more time. They're looking for that time freedom, that flexibility to live on their own terms. Obviously, they're wanting to create more money than what they can do if they're in a job. And without doubt, they're looking for more freedom. So my question to you guys that I'm assuming on the, on the call right now, all small business owners, how many of you have actually got, since you've gone into business for yourself, more time, more money, and more freedom. It doesn't happen, right? So the reasons that we go into business, uh, we're, we're not getting there. And, and the reason for that, in my opinion, is because the old model is broken. So what I've really identified, and this is not going to be a surprise to anybody, but here are the most common problems, the top three that all business owners face. Clearly, it's cash flow. Like particularly if you're in startup or if you've been in business for three years, the biggest challenge everybody has is cash flow. When it comes in, when it goes out, how to balance that. It's um, where, where to channel the funds. You know, Do we channel the funds into marketing? Do we channel the funds into leads? Do we channel the funds into training? Do we challenge the funds into HR? Where, where do we channel all of those funds? But this is the one 
that stood out for me. And, and this is lead generation. Everybody talks about more leads, more leads, more leads. We need more leads. This is the audience that we're all marketing to, constantly throwing stuff out. The challenge is you're never going to have enough leads. You never will. Because as you grow within your business, your expectations of what you want to be achieving are going to be changing. So if you're focusing just on more leads, more leads, more leads, what you're actually doing is you're losing focus on why you're in business to begin with. The interesting thing about the whole lead generation thing is that I learned um, an important stat, which just hit me right between the eyes by Bernard Cassid. Maybe some of you know Bernard. Um, and he said that marketing is a long-term game which it is, but he said that people need to see you 21 times before they remember you. And I think to myself, 21 times, to me, that is a massive amount of spamming people. And that's what's happened. People have been spammed so much by so many companies that they've actually disengaged, all right? And then they have to engage with you seven times before they even trust you enough to want to buy. That's a big problem. I don't know about you guys, but I personally couldn't be bothered putting myself in front of someone 21 times and having to engage with someone seven times in order to them to want to buy. And if you're thinking about all the people in that audience there, and you've got to put yourself in front of these people, every single one of them 21 times, we've got a problem. The other issue that most people have is obviously closing the sales. And what I learned very quickly as a business broker is that small business owners can be great at their craft, but they actually suck when it comes to sales. And the reason for that is because they don't want to be seen as the salesperson. They're scared to be asking for the sale. They don't want to be known as sleazy or, or whatever. Um, these are people that actually don't know how to do the sales. All they want to do is focus on what they do best. But unfortunately, they forget that they are the reason that people are buying from them. So when I said to you what I'm going to teach you is a little bit different to what you've seen before, I'm going to hit you straight between the eyes with it. In my opinion, this is where all business owners go wrong. How much money can I steal from you? We've all been on the other side of the coin where we've known that the person that we're talking to has absolutely no interest in us as people. And all they want to do is get their hands on our money and put your hands up if you've been in that boat. I certainly have. I face it all the time. So how much can I get from you? They're not focusing on the reason they've gone into business and that is to provide a product or a solution that, that their prospects need. What they also forget now is that prospects, all those people that you saw before are well educated now. Thanks to people like Nick in the IT world, in the marketing world, in the online business world, thanks to the internet, people are doing their own research before we even find them. So what I want to share with you, some of you may know this, some of you may not, is that 70% of the buyers that are out there. So that whole crowd that we saw before, 70% of those people are buyers that are well-researched, that know what they want. Out of 100% of the people that we're prospecting to, and this is when we're doing direct marketing constantly, here are some important stats that you need to be aware of. 60% of the people that we promote our products and services to are not looking for what we've got. So if we're talking about the fact that people need to see something 21 times before they remember us, yet we understand that 60 out of 100 people are not even interested in what we've got to do, this is why touch points have gone through the roof and this is why people are losing sales and this is why people are spending more and more and more money trying to attract leads because they're talking to the wrong people. Out of that group of 100%, 60% don't even wanna know us. 20% of the people, and this is where we start to get, where we need to start getting better with, our, with the way that we market. 20% of the people 
out of that 70% that have done their research, 20% of that group already know they want something, but they are unsure about what it is that they want. And what our job is to do is to have two ears and one mouth and listen very, very carefully to what the problems are, what their needs are, what their wants are, so that we can identify that clearly in order to be able to relate that back to them and educate them on, on that buying process of what it is that they're looking for. 17% of the people that are out there that have done all this research think they know what they want. So they're so far down the buying line that they've already done it. It, not, it might even come down to price at that point. However, our job, again, is to make sure that we can give them exactly what they want, because sometimes they think they know what they want, but it might not be exactly what they want. And this is where our communication gets a little bit better so that we can help them. That 20% of the people, that 17% of the people, they're the people that we're talking to. The next group of people that know exactly what they want, these are the people that it is 100% price driven. How many times have you seen people come to you where they've already made the decision on what they want to buy? They already know that you've got the product or the service that they're looking for. They don't care about what you have to offer. All they care about is the price. I've been one of those people. I know what I want. If it's a, at the moment, I'm having some challenges with my back, which I'm working on. I wanted an inversion table that my osteo recommended. I did my research on the inversion tables. Um, I narrowed them all down. I picked out the one that I want. And then all of a sudden, thanks to the wonderful world of Google, um, I got smashed with all these different companies that were selling the same inversion table and it became a price war between them all. I just picked the cheapest because I didn't care. It wasn't about connecting, right? It was about 100%, that's what that was. So we need to get better at the connecting. So what I've got here with my, um, with my sales flow chart is very simple. The top, uh, sorry, the bottom left-hand corner, this is where everybody is stuck in the world of business. Just, just wondering, our, Adam, just uh, your slides haven't moved on at all yet. My slides haven't into? moved? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, no, we're still stuck on the um, 29 years of sales and business. Oh, I do. I'm going to stop this then um, and do a new screen share because obviously it's wrong. Yeah, good idea. Sorry, guys, here I am talking and flicking through it with my finger because the mouse wasn't working. Um, let me just try this. What can you see, Nick? Uh, oh, yep, that's a uh, change to your uh, slides view. You see, see the slides down the side, the thumbnails and your main slide. Okay, so now what I need to do is slideshow from the beginning. And what can you see? 3% know exactly. All right, so we're on the right page. And now? Uh, the authentic sales training flow chart. All right, I don't know what I did, but I fixed it. Thanks, Fantastic. mate. So, um, do you want me to flick back through all the other ones so you can see all those wonderful slides that none of you saw? Old one's nodding her head. <laughs> <laughs> this is for you, old one. Look at this. There we are. Oh, I love the elephant. <laughs> so here I am with all these people. These are all the people that we're marketing to, guys. So um, the biggest mistakes, and, and that was the picture there of the guy robbing someone. All right. So let's move forward to the flow chart. So bottom left-hand corner, all of our effort goes into AdWords, SEO, Facebook, LinkedIn, networking groups, emails, referrals, money and time spent on generating 100 leads. And I like to use this just for round numbers. So if you think about what I was just sharing with you before, that out of those 100 leads, 60% of those people are not looking for what you've got. They don't care. They're not interested, they're flicking. And that's what it is. So we need to get away from that 60% and then we're focusing on that last 40%. Now, out of that 40% of people, what I was sharing with you is that 20% um, um, of them have done their research and think they know what they want. 17% are almost there and 3% know exactly what they want. 
So these are the people that we're talking to. Now, how do we increase our conversion rates? It's very, very simple. It comes down to increasing our communication. So my three-step system is connect, communicate and convert. But in order to do that, we first need to understand what sales is. Now, we're all in sales. It doesn't matter whether you're a doctor. It doesn't matter whether you're a salesperson. It doesn't matter whether you're an IT expert. It does not matter. Every single person is in sales. The only difference is some do it for a living. But what people forget is that in sales, sales is not what you do, but it's actually an extension of who you are. So how you show up is what people are buying. So when people need to see you 21 times before they remember you, whether they need to interact with you seven times before they buy from you, when you're being authentic about your communication with people, you don't need to do anywhere near as much of that work because we're building trust straight away. And we're building trust straight away because we are simply becoming solution providers to their problems. And we're only selling to people what they want and what they need, period. And this is the big difference. So my first secret is all around connection. And the biggest problem that people have right now with connection is, the congru is their congruency in their message. So if we look at combining sales and marketing, marketing and sales are nothing to do with each other. They're completely different, but they're thrown into the same box. I can guarantee you if somebody had a marketing budget of $100,000, $100,000 would go to marketing and none of that would go to sales. Why is that? When, as Nick said at the beginning, sales is your lifeline. If you don't sell, you're not going to have a business. So we need to change that around. But when we change that around, the marketing needs to be an extension of who we are as individuals because people want to do business, as we know, with people that they trust. So in order to build that trust to help us increase our conversion rates, whether it's on your website, whether it's in the marketing that you're doing, however you're portraying your product or service, it must be a direct reflection of you, not what you do. And when we get to that point, and when we come across from that point, we are instantly building trust. When we're instantly building trust, they don't see us as another sleazy salesperson that's just going straight for their hip pocket. They don't see us as someone that doesn't care about them that's just looking for money. They don't have to have their hands up. I mean, think about this. Every time we walk into a shopping centre, we can't walk past a shop without being bombarded by the salespeople. I can't stand it. Leave me alone. If I'm interested in what you've got, I'll come and ask you. If I'm not interested, let me be because I don't trust you. Why don't I trust you? Because you're the same as everybody else. There's so much noise out there. There's so much commotion out there. Everybody's trying to do everything that's the same. So what makes you different? If you're an identical twin, I've got twins. They're not identical. One's a boy, one's a girl. But I guarantee you their identity is completely different. And the way that they are is completely different. So you need to separate yourself from all the other noise. And the way that you do that is stop talking to avatars, start talking to people like real people, start being yourself in all of the methods that you're trying to connect with them. When we do that, what you'll start to see is that um, that red box there that says conversions, I don't know if you can see my mouse, I can't see it. Um, but those 100 leads that we're talking to, the conversations that we're starting to have with those 40 people start to be very different conversations. What you will find is that because we are connecting with them right from the beginning, that they're a little bit more open to expressing themselves to us. When they're open to expressing themselves to us more, we have the opportunity to ask more questions. And that's all sales is, it's just information gathering. If you're in business and you're providing a product or a service, it's all about information gathering. And the better we get at doing that, the better those conversion rates are. What you'll see there is that I've got 12 sales out of 40 conversations. It didn't matter what industry I was working in. It didn't matter what role I was doing. 
Um, you put me in front of someone, for whatever reason, my conversion rates were always the same. It was always 30%. And when I think back to why that is, um, it's not because of my product knowledge, it's because of how I connect with the person as an individual. So the next three um, secrets that I wanna to talk to you about is how do we connect? We've obviously spoken about getting congruent with our message and, and having what we're putting out into the world the same as who we are right here. But the difference is our intention behind what we're putting out to the world. Right from the beginning, our intention must not be on getting a sale. Our intention must be 100% on being of service because if we are being of service, then we have integrity in the way that we show up. When we have integrity in the way that we show up, people can feel that. Human beings are energetical creatures. We know when we are with someone who is being truthful. We also know when we're being in front of someone who's not. When we've got trust, People are more interested in, um, in doing business with us as we know. And we know that the hardest thing to build is trust, but it's also the quickest thing to destroy. So if you are being in any way, shape or form inauthentic, you will destroy that trust in a heartbeat and it's gone forever. But when we are being authentic with our communication, what happens is we go from needing to do direct marketing after direct marketing after direct marketing, to all of a sudden people seeking us out. And that's where our conversion rates skyrocket. When someone's coming to us versus us going to them. Um, so uh, there's Angela. I like Angela, she's a good, she's a good girl. She's a little action. The reason I show Angela is because she's a travel agent. And when I was beta testing my program, Angela was the first person to put her hand up to do it. And I wanted her to do it simply because I know the sales training that they do in the travel industry. Um, it's intense. And again, it's not about service. It's 100% about KPI. Um, when Angela went through this, um, what really brought me joy was um, when she said that being engaging, being truthful and being honest in how we do business is a game changer. And, and that's, that's pretty pretty cool. So what's your takeaway from that first section? If anything's come up for you in relation to connecting, I'd love you to stick it in the chat. And if not, I'll just keep moving on. All right. So let's keep moving on. Now we get into com communication. Oh, hang on. Someone just listen, listen, listen. Congruent and building trust. Attraction marketing. Yeah. Be yourself. You got it. All right. Communication. So when it comes to increasing our conversion rates, it is 100% on how we communicate with another person. And this was the biggest one of the biggest issues that most of the small business owners that I met when I was a business broker were failing at. They don't know how to communicate. They've never been taught how to communicate. Um, actually, I'd be interested to see, I'm just going to put this and see if I can see everybody on my view, but how many people in the room have actually done sales training? Two, three. I can't see everybody on my view, Nick, but how many hands are up? One, two, three, about, four, about half a dozen or so. Oh, half a dozen eight, out of eight. Yep. Eight, eight out of 24. What's that? 20%? 30%. So you guys are really, really good. You should give yourself a pat on the back. Normally when I ask that question, it's always less than 20% of the room. And when I look at businesses and understand why 80% of businesses fail in their first 12 months, it makes sense because no one's actually doing any sales training um, and they're not learning how to communicate. So we go from conversion, uh, from the red conversations to conversions much quicker when we learn how to communicate with people. The biggest problem that we are finding in the business world 
in my opinion right now, and I mentioned this before, is setting your attention. So if we're communicating with people, what's the intention that you have before you start that communication? And, and I know that there's sharks everywhere and, and that's the problem. I don't want to do business with a shark. I want to give my money that I work hard for to people that I believe care about me and care about the best result for me. I don't want to do business with anybody else other than those people. So where do you sit on that ledger? When you're talking to people, what is your intention when you're having conversations? Why don't people want to be seen as salespeople? Because look at this guy. We've all seen this guy. Is he the car salesman? Is he the insurance agent? Is he, is he the real estate agent? Is he the photocopier guy? Is he the vacuum cleaner guy that knocked down our doors doing Kirby's all those years ago? Um, a study was done by Dr. Michael Jensen in Harvard University um, many years ago. And um, he's a professor. And in his study, he proved that your conversion rates naturally go up 300% when you're being integral with your clients. Now, I'll talk to a lot of people in sales that say they have their, their integrity training. Let me tell you, if the bottom line is about getting a sale now, then there's no integrity there. If the bottom line is about how can I be of service to you, and if I can be of service to you, and I know I can help you with your problem, then I will demonstrate that. And if you trust me enough and you believe me enough, you'll ask me, what's the next step? Then there's integrity because it's not press hard three copies. It's generally wanting to, to be of service to them. The other thing that most people fail at when it comes to communication is not listening. So I was talking to someone today, I'm doing um, another one of these webinars tomorrow. And he said, to, I said to him, what's your, what's, your, what's your biggest problem do you think? And he said, my biggest problem, Adam, is I just don't shut up. I just don't know when to stop talking. I said, yeah, that's a pretty big problem because if you're the sort of person that's just talking and talking and talking, I said to him, dude, why do you think, and I don't know whether, I just use God as a word, whether it's God or whatever. Why do you think we were given two ears and one mouth? Do you think that was because this guy was supposed to talk these guys out of action? Or is it because these guys are supposed to listen more than what this guy's got to say? So when we're in business, if we can intentively listen, and remember I said to you before, sales is all about um, information gathering and problem solving. So if we can do that, then our communication levels will go through the roof. The top three outcomes that I have to share with you when it comes to building the communication is the first thing is, how do we build rapport? So one of the things that I learned when I did NLP back in the day was rapport building. And now I, I used to use NLP a lot when it came to sales, now I don't. But the only thing that I've taken on board with my NLP is the unconscious rapport that I've learned how to connect with people on. So people think that building rapport is us being nice to somebody else. It's not about being nice at all. It's simply about learning how to communicate with someone on a subconscious level. In the world of NLP, what people, um, what, what, we were, what we were taught is that 55% of human interaction is physical. And I'll give you an example of what I mean by that. When, think about the last time you went out to a foreign environment, whether it was a networking event for the first time, and there's a whole group of people there. You walk in, um, physical. Did you feel energy in one part of the room that made you feel uncomfortable? And did you feel energy in another part of the room that you felt more comfortable? I know what the answer is because you gravitated to the area of the room that you feel more comfortable. So how does that work in a sales environment? Think about your prospects or your whoever that we're talking to. How are they feeling when we're talking to them? When I know that 55% of the sale that we're gonna get right now is based on that physical connection. When you've got face-to-face, -face business, you can create a much 
greater result because you have that physical connection that you're working with. But if you don't know how to build rapport with people on a physical level, they will be repelled by you. And when they're repelled by you, they're never going to do business with you. And that's a fact. 38% of what we do when it comes to creating rapport is our tonality. So for those of you that are working online or working on the phones, we don't have that physical component. So whilst the online world has given us greater expansion to connect with people, it's actually taken away the greatest connection that we have with people. So we need to get better at things like tonality. So what's tonality? Tonality is the sound and the tone of people's voices. Um, you will know that there's different parts. I love America is a very easy example because there's different parts of that state where people talk completely different. The Southerners have a long drawn out accent. The New Yorkers have that really fast, whatever. Some of them are high pitched, some of them are low pitched. The way that we create an unconscious rapport with someone is matching and mirroring them physically, matching and mirroring them with their tonality. And I teach a lot of this with my programs. So if someone's got a, a low voice, we just start off very quickly with learning how to communicate with them on their level so that they're comfortable talking to us. Have we all heard the saying that everybody loves the sound of their own voice? except for when you listen to yourself on your headphones and say, shit, is that what I sound like? <laughs> but otherwise we do. So when we're connecting with people, we need to learn how to communicate with them on their level. That's going to build more trust. And the irony is that when it comes to um, rapport, only 7% of all human um, connection is words. So when you saw that slide before about listen more, talk less. Only 7% of what we say makes a difference in the world of subconscious rapport. So you just need to pay attention to the words that they're using. Nick, the slides are still moving. Yep, great. So when we're paying attention to the words that, we, that they're using, if we're listening to them intentively, we can actually go deeper in our questioning. And when we're going deeper in our questioning and getting more answers back from them, we're increasing the way that we're communicating. And because of that, there's more trust. When we can repeat back to them what they're telling us, how many times, how frustrated do you guys get when you try to explain something to someone and you just know they're not getting it? Whether that's business or whether that's personal, it, that, that, that frustration is really, really in people's faces now. But when we are the opposite of that, and when we can actually repeat back to somebody exactly what they're trying to communicate with us, bang, straight away, they know that you understand their problem. A great quote. This is the only quote that I've got in the whole presentation. When you can articulate another person's problem better than they can, they automatically and unconsciously credit you with knowing the solution. We are solution providers. That's from why put small. The last point here is about being of, of genuine service. And I've harped on this big time throughout this presentation. If you take anything away from this, business is not about KPIs. Money is a byproduct of service. That's it. We as human beings are put on this planet to be of service to another human being. When we operate from this space and we are genuinely wanting to be of service and we're not focusing on what's in it for us and we're completely detached from the outcome because of that, it's going to open up massively. I can see there's a chat there. Um, Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Personality types are important, but I don't know. I don't go too much into personality types. I just talk to people as people. So it's, it depends on how far, how far you want to go. Um, we'll go past Rodney. So uh, I can see that there's already some takeaways in there. What else is um, a takeaway from that little section there, guys? For some reason, I can't scroll up. Yeah, drama. It's not working for me. 
All right, I'm going to keep moving along. So the next part of uh, my three-step secrets is convert. So the first part of it was um, connect. We need to learn how to authentically connect with our people. We then need to learn how, excuse me, to communicate with these people so that they naturally turn into conversions. So when you saw my flow chart before and I was showing you that my average was 12 sales out of 40 conversations, it was simply because that first two part of what I did, um, you're welcome, um, Cecily. Um, that part of what I did was always the same and I've been doing that for a very long time. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it from that to the 400%. So let's buckle in. What's the biggest problem when it comes to conversions? Not following up. It's a very simple thing to do. But you know what's fascinating? According to a study from the Brevet Group, maybe they are, just one of those things that you were talking about before, Nick, a PDF, I was Googling something, this magical PDF came up on my screen and I read that and I thought, ah, oh. the Brevet Group um, had stated that 80% of sales require an average of five follow-ups in order to close a deal. So I want you to think about that for a minute. It took an average of five follow-ups to close a deal. Why do you think that might be? I think because people have trust issues. Trust issues, yep. Hmm. I think that's a big one. And um, I think also people want to be sure that they're making a good investment. Yeah. Maybe he didn't follow up correctly on the first follow-up. Like authentically in that first follow-up was another yep. opportunity to be more authentic and so forth. Yep. Do you know, um, up until I started my first business, which ironically was in the network marketing industry, and I did that for seven years and um, never did I want to do network marketing, but I fell into it. Another great example. Prior to that, I would follow people up. Someone put in the comment there, follow up until they die or we do, whatever the thing was. I would follow up and follow up and follow up and, and I would just hassle and hassle and hassle people into submission to buying from me just to shut me up and get me out of their lives, right? Um, that really didn't bring me joy. And what I learned in my first business was the art of detachment to the point where even today, I will only follow up somebody two or three times max. And that third follow-up call, and the reason that I do two or three is that I know that we're busy, okay? I know that we've got competing priorities. I know that there's so much going on in everybody's life that even with the right intentions, people will want to connect or they don't want to connect, whatever it is. But, but I know that that's the truth. So I'll follow up. I'm not going to get them because they're in meetings. They might call me back. I'm in meetings. I'll call them back. They're in meetings. We get this whole thing. Um, but after the second or the third follow-up call, if I'm not getting anything back from them, the reason I'm not getting anything back from them is because they've lost interest in what it was that we were talking about, or I wasn't the person that could provide the solution to them straight away. And how do we know when we're the person that can provide the solution to them straight away? We know that because in our conversation, they ask us, what's the next step? You know you've done your job brilliantly when that person says, so where do we go to from here? Right? We shouldn't need to be hassling people and following up time after time after time. Because where are we putting our where are we putting all of our energy? Are we putting our energy into chasing people? Or are we putting our energy energy into providing service to people? Because if they truly believe that we can help them with their problem, then we're halfway hosed. Objection handling. Yeah, and I get this a lot. You know, when I say to people, what is it that you really want to learn about sales? And they say to me, Adam, I want to learn how to overcome objections. Do you guys actually know what an objection is? Um, unmute yourself if you know what an objection is. 
It's a reason that people won't proceed with the sale. Possibly. What else? Oh, uh, objections, confusion. Confusion. So we have two types of objections. We have the first objection from the person that was not looking for what we want. That's 60% of the people that we forced ourselves upon that have actually got themselves to a point where they're saying, no, 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 I'm not interested. Who's been in that boat? We all have, right? Stop doing that stuff, right? If, if that's what you're doing, stop doing it. The other objection is confusion. So if I showed you, when I showed you that graph, the 20% of the people have done their research and are needing some more help on making the right decision. 17% of the people that have done their research think they know what they want, but they're just looking for clarification. And 3% say, how much is it? I'm ready to buy. We don't care about the 3%. That's always going to be reward for effort, right? That's the universe saying, well done for showing up. Congratulations, here is something for you as a bonus. Those people will always be there, but that's not who we're talking to. We're talking to the 17 and the 20% of those people. So when we can learn how to overcome their confusion, it's not an objection, it's actually a buying question. When people start asking us questions, that's when we know we haven't solved the solution properly. So we need to dig deeper. The hardest thing is closing the deal, or so they say. Back in the day when I was doing commission sales, I was selling, we had people coming into the rooms, one hour long scripted presentations. And I tell you, that door was locked. <laughs> These people were not leaving until they signed up. That happens everywhere in the business world today. And that's the stuff that must change. That's when we hear about closes. If I'm on a sales page and I see people saying that I'm a professional closer, get out of my universe. I want nothing to do with you because you're manipulating people into doing something that they don't want and they don't need in order for your greater good. But closing the deal is as simple as if we've done everything right, them saying, what's the next step? Or us saying, what's the next step? All right? When we get to that point where we can confidently say to someone, you know what? I feel like I've been able to, you know, not overcome your objections. I feel like I've been able to satisfy all of your problems. Is that true? We've, we've been able to dig so deep in our questioning all the way through that asking that question is actually not hard to do. And when we have got confidence in asking that question about where would you like to go from here or are you happy to move forward or whatever your line is, um, if you're doing that from a space of detachment to the outcome and you're doing it from a space of attachment to wanting to serve, there is no uncomfortable feeling in closing the deal. In fact, there's nothing more empowering than when someone says to me, Adam, how do we, how do we move forward on this? That I'm like, oh my God, I've just found somebody else that sees it, that I can train, that I can then get that message out to the world so they can behave differently in business. So closing the deal is actually a natural progression. And how we do that is simple. I learned a phrase many years ago and it has stuck with me like glue. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. If you're operating in your businesses from a space of care for another person, regardless of the outcome, then you are absolutely being authentic in who you are and what you do. When you're, and I've touched on this before, when you're completely detached to the outcome, then you are absolutely being of more service because there's no awkwardness about the next step. I don't care whether you do business with me. What I do care about is that you've learned something from our time together that can actually make a difference to your life. Why? Because how are you gonna be talking to me 
Uh, how are you going to be talking about me to your circle of influence? See, I'm looking at you right now, Irene, because you're just in my screen. Um, but I'm actually not talking to you. I'm talking to your network. And I know that your network is 150 people. So if I'm operating to you from a space of genuine authenticity with complete detachment to the outcome and being of service in the meantime, what are you going to say to your network when someone says to you, God, I wish I could get more sales in my business? I'm going to say, talk to Adam. <laughs> Irrespective of whether you've done business with me or not, right? irrespective that's when our conversion rates go through the roof because i'm actually in a position where i'm over delivering solutions with no attachment nick you waving time no oh, five minutes okay so if we have a look at the flow chart you can see here why my conversion rates have always been solid but this is where it gets exciting I am happy to spend time in that first quadrant with my Google, with my SEO, with everything else to generate people to talk to. Absolutely. Because I know that 30% of the people I talk to will become a customer of mine. I know that out of those, that half of them will become an ongoing customer of mine. I know that the other half that may not, because I'm acting the way that I am, Irene, are going to be referring me to their contacts. And I'm going to be getting repeat business from you and I'm getting referral business from you. And when I'm in that situation of repeat and referral business from you, I don't need to generate more leads. I don't need to spend all that time building trust because it's already there. I don't need to unpacked everything because it's already there and it's proven that a referral that comes to you has a 400 percent higher conversion rate than anyone that we speak to from google seo work facebook linkedin whatever 400 percent the authentic sales training conversion rates go up between 50 and 300 percent because i'm teaching people all about um, authenticity, all about intention, all about integrity, all about ethics, all about values. It's all about mindset on how we can create um, that communication with people on a level that they understand, not on a level that we're wanting to manipulate. And that's my friends where your conversion rates will go through the roof because you don't need to generate 100 leads when you're operating from this space. You could have 10 leads in the next month and you could close nine out of ten sales because they are the right people that you can provide the right product and the right solution with the right intention to deliver the right outcome and they will be raving marketing fans for you forever so um that is what i've got for you today um let's open it up for some questions I have a question. Of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> so curious I am as a journalist. Uh, I yeah. love that today, Adam. Thank you so much. Really fantastic principles you've shared and a great reminder to particularly to detach from the outcome and to always look at being of service, which I know a lot of us have heard this many times over, but how often do we actually do it? And so it's really been great to actually just, just think, you know, how often am I actually doing that? So my question is, around the detachment and around the follow-up so what do you say to clients say say someone hops on an event that you run how do you follow up with them so an event like this one yeah or event like or something where you're selling a product at the end and they don't buy and you want to just mm -hmm. check in with them afterwards how do you yep. what do you do in that process i ask for feedback okay yeah that's good because when, I, when i'm asking for feedback what that does is see what we have to remember is that when we follow up people they're expecting us to sell to them so the objections get harder the arms are crossed that's why they don't answer the call because they know you're going to sell them 
right? That's why they look at the number and they can see next time you ring, oh, oh, there's old one again. That's going to be another 10 grand. <laughs> oh, I'm not answering that one, right? Um, they're anticipating that they're, because that is how people have been trained in the industrial age. What I'm talking about is not industrial age stuff. So when I leave a message, Aldwin, I'm just ringing up to get some feedback on what you thought. And you know what? I genuinely want feedback. Why do I want feedback? Because I want to know how I can improve. Because the more I can improve, the better service I'm being to the next person I talk to. We're human beings. We're here to grow and evolve. And if we don't do that, we're shrinking and we're dying. So if I'm not evolving and growing within how I am and who I am and, and what I'm doing, then I can't get a better result for the next person. So it's always about feedback. And you know what? Everybody is happy to give you feedback because they don't feel like you're going for the hip pocket. And I'm not. And then through the feedback is what was your greatest takeaway? You know, what didn't you like? What, what, really, what really resonated with you? Um, can I ask, do you see that this, is this something that can benefit you or not? No, no worries. Why not? Excellent. And the reason I'm asking why not is not because I want to turn them around and start the whole objection handling process. I actually want to understand what it is about what I'm doing that didn't resonate with that person that they don't feel that they could take on board and utilize to help them expand. Because my goal is all about creating expansion in your business because that creates expansion in your life. Oh, that's gold, Adam. Thank you so much for that. And the other question adding to that is how soon after an event should you follow up? Like, does it matter if it's months later or, um, yeah. you know? <laughs> or... So, so the human being, who, who here suffers from buyer's remorse? <laughs> yes. Do you know what buyer's remorse is? Buyer's remorse is that we buy on emotion and then we justify with logic. So when I was doing the close, I would get people so juiced up with emotion that how do we, how do, where do we sign? only to walk away and then think, shit, why did I do that? I've experienced that. You've probably all experienced that. But that's because um, we are at the highest of our um, emotion at the end of the interaction that we've had with someone, the highest or the lowest. So in the sales world, really, you've got between 24 and 48 hours. That's when the, the emotion's the highest. Um, I will always give a follow-up call the next day, right? And not because the emotion's the highest, but because the information is actually the, um, this is going to come out wrong, um, refre refreshed. Um, most of the information's retained. Yeah, got it. Right? So what, what happens is over 24 hours, we start to lose the information you know, um, I, what they say is if you don't use it, you lose it. That's, that's the whole thing. So normally within two or three days, if I've spent an hour with someone, they're actually only going to remember one or two things from that whole hour. So straight away, the callback would be the next day, 24 hours later or 48 hours after that. And then I'll decide whether I can be bothered doing a third call. And if I am going to do a third call, so you want to know about complete detachment, Baldwin, this is my third and final call to you. I'm not going to call you again, and I won't, because I'm not going to chase you. If you don't feel that what I have can provide you service and value, it can't. Yeah, and ideally it should be ease and flow, right? I think sometimes we overcomplicate this whole process and we get too much in our heads and overthink it in, instead of just very simply asking for that feedback. So I'm actually now considering there's some events I've done a while ago where I didn't follow up and I'm wondering now, is it worth going back and just checking in with those people, even though some of these events were sort of months ago? Um, would you say it would still be worth just checking in and seeing how they're going? They're going to forget what the event was and they're just going to say, yeah, it was really good. 
Because okay. people, people are afraid to tell people the truth, right? <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Thank you. But, but it's a great opportunity for you to invite them to another one. Hey, I know that you were in this one. Um, I just wanted to reconnect with you and just let you know I'm doing another one um, along these lines. Would you like to come along as my guest? So what you're doing is you're just putting yourself back into their universe. Love it. Thank you so much. Gold tonight. Excellent. Thanks, Adam. Excellent. Well, I think that's probably us for the uh, for the questions today. But I'm sure, uh, Adam, you'll be available for uh, questions, you know, if people want to contact you afterwards. Yes. What I'd like to offer all of you that are on the line tonight, because I do value your time, as I said before, um, a free 15 minute, a free 15 minute um, strategy session, if you would like, and just very quickly in that session to identify what you feel are the top three problems that you've got right now with sales. And I'd be very happy to provide any feedback on what I think um, can help you, you know, turn that around. Um, and then wherever conversations go is wherever conversations go. Excellent. So, uh, and a link for that, if you've got a link for that, you can drop into chat or how do they get in touch with you for it? Yep. I will, I will, let me see. There you go. And, uh, while you're doing that as well too, we do have a, uh, uh a gift uh, which will draw in the uh, lucky door prize draw, uh, which has been provided by uh, Adam as well. Uh, so, and we do have a special way of uh, drawing that. So what is it, Adam? It's a copy, a signed copy of my book, The Art of Authentic Selling. Excellent. All right. So we, um, uh, okay. So you should be able to see the uh, wheel of names now. So everybody's name is in that uh, wheel of names and uh, we're just going to simply spin the wheel and uh, the lucky person that uh, wins it uh, gets the book. So let's, uh, let's give us a drum roll, please on your desks <laughs> or wherever you are. And our lucky winner. Oh, look at this. Eh? The person that asked all the questions, old one. Oh, amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. See, you participate. You you win, one. <laughs> I feel bad though because Jenny had a question. I don't know if you've got a quick minute. I feel feel like I took too much time. Oh no, that's good. Uh, well, uh, have you got a question, Jenny? Have you? Uh, thank you, Aldwin. Um, it uh, was just a quick one, actually. So, um, you and I previously have spoken, Adam, about the whole some will, some won't. So what next? And you know, and that way of staying detached in the sale. Um, but what I was curious um, to understand your mindset and psychology when you're having an authentic conversation with somebody, you know that you can help them, they know that you can help them, and they still walk away from the sale, which is their right, of course. But how do you deal with that? Like, um, you know, what's your process? Mm. So do you mind if I use you, you as an example? Go for it. Yeah. So we, we have been through this process before and mm -hmm. what you're talking about is that you know this can benefit you and I know this can benefit you as well, but the yep. timing for you was not right. Yeah. I can't change that. Right. Mm -hmm. But what I can do is I can keep showing up and still be of service to you because there will be a point in time when the timing is right. Right. And you know, whether that's you directly or whether that's through you indirectly. So if you think back, guys, to 3% of people that just come and buy, those three people, that 3% of people are coming and buying. That's the universe rewarding you for the work that you're doing. Yeah. So if I'm being detached with you, Jenny, if I know that some will, some won't, someone's waiting somewhere, but I'm still showing from a space of being of service, um, to me, it's not about the money because I will always be rewarded universally. I know the universe mm. has got my back. Yeah. I operate from that space. All right, great. Thank you, I appreciate that, that. Does that answer your question? Yes, yeah, it does. Thank you. Excellent. So for those that have got more questions, 
um, then uh, yes, contact Adam. In fact, probably your best thing to do is to click that link in chat, jump onto a free call uh, with Adam, and uh, you can ask away to your heart's content. So uh, you've probably got two takers there. I could see old one's got another question just burning in there. So she's probably likely to jump on that. And probably Jenny as well too. She's just sort of held back the other one there. <laughs> So, um, so uh, if you do want to watch this again, or there's some think points in here that you uh, that uh, would be helpful to cover again, it will be going up on the Smashgo YouTube channel tomorrow afternoon. Uh, so your the link is now in chat. If you go there now and subscribe, click on the link and go and subscribe. If you click the bell after you've subscribed, then you get a notification as soon as the uh, uh, video has been uploaded to uh, YouTube. Um, but apart from that, what an awesome evening. Thanks um, so much, Adam, for uh, uh, your time tonight and um, for uh, giving so much uh, clarity and wisdom. And it's good to be reminded of some of the things and good to learn some uh, new things as well. So let's give a, uh, a big round of applause to uh, Adam for uh, showing up tonight. And again, I, I round of applause to yourself. I know that we have so much going on in life that uh, you guys making some time tonight. I value that highly and I appreciate you coming and having a listen to whatever it was that came out of my mouth. <laughs> Excellent. All right. And we'll be back again, same time, uh, same place next week. Uh, next week, it will be me presenting and uh, we'll be talking about uh, how to, um, how to gain an extra hundred dollars in uh, sort of uh, business online every single day so that's our session for next week all right go and have a great week and uh, we'll see you back on the line or we'll see you back next week <laughs>